Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So in this video we're going to initialize SDL We're going to create a window And then we're going to create an event loop And then handle Windows events, essentially SDL events And we're also going to abstract the window into a C++ RAII class, okay? Using, of course, modern CPP, modern C++. So, let's get started. All right, so please make sure to watch my previous video about how to set up SDL with CMake and get some modules. Uh, it's the previous video, all right? And let's get started. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so first of all, we need to initialize SDL. Now we could say SDL init, and then here we have to give it flags that indicates which subsystems you want to uh, include. Now SDL is a bit of a big library. Well, not as big as some libraries. It's relatively lightweight still, but still there is some uh, a lot of crazy stuff going on. So you can include whatever subsystems you want. In my case, since we just want to create windows, well, you just about SDL in its video. An SDL in video will also go ahead and include for us events, I think. And I'm not sure, maybe also timer, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah. Anyway, so you can just say SDL in a video. There you go. Now, I actually uh, grad her go with SDL in its subsystem because it's just more readable. But in fact, they're the same exact thing, I believe. But yeah, anyways. Also, SDL in it or SDL in its subsystem returns zero on success. So what we could do if SDL subsystem then we could essentially go ahead and SDL log, uh, let's say critical or log error or just log whatever you want. Here you have to give it a log category and then you can give it whatever category. Now this is pretty useful, like SDL log is pretty useful. Now, for example, you could give it some category out of these guys, like for example, category audio or assert or application or error or render or system or, or video or test even. And then essentially you could go ahead and tell SDL to filter logs depending on the category, like this logs from render, from the category render, show them. The other logs, no, or something like that. Basically SDL gives you a pretty simple and cool little login uh, utility essentially that you could use anyways. So in our case, let's go I think with SDL log category error, and then we could say SDL gets error as the uh, message because in fact if you look into the documentation of init subsystem you can notice that it's telling us call sdl get error for more information and that's how sdl handles errors all right so when there is an error it just returns for you an error code that you have to check for and then essentially you could call sdl get error to get a pointer to a buffer now of course you have to call sdl get error as as uh, soon as possible before calling any other SDL function that could also uh, uh, error. Otherwise, you're gonna lose that string, uh, like you're gonna lose that previous error because it will override it, you know? And also, if you want to keep that error, of course, like for a long time, then I think make sure to actually copy that string into another string of your own that you, you are the one to manage its, uh, you know, like lifetime. But anyways, for now, this is, should be fine, hopefully. Otherwise, we could also go ahead. Now, let me show you what happens here. Let's say this fails. Of course, this won't fail, but I'm just saying not. So in the case, if that doesn't happen. Oh, I forgot a semicolon there. All right. Those are just warnings, by the way, from SDL. And there you go. So critical, but there is no message because there was no actual real error. Otherwise, we could actually uh, also show a message box, in, message box instead. So SDL show simple message box. And then here we could give it some flags, message box flags. Let's go, SDL message box. Now there is, for example, SDL message box error. If I include it, then it's gonna uh, show to the user in the message box an error icon, if, if possible, in that particular platform, of course. And here the title, let's go with an error. And the message, let's go with SDL get error in this case. And for the window, let's go with uh, 
SDL. Well, the thing is you can parent this message box to some window, but in this case, we didn't even initialize SDL uh, or like we didn't even was able to initialize SDL correctly. So this probably won't work, but just in case if it works, you can, there you go. You could say null PTR, which means that you don't want to parent it to any window. Uh, so yeah. Now, this could also fail, as I said, especially that SDL didn't initialize successfully. It could also fail uh, for the same reasons that SDL in subsystem, SDL in video failed. Uh, so we also have to check for that. And if that wasn't successful, we just fall back into actual logging. OK, or we could even do both if needed. But yeah. So that was. Oh, now there is a little problem here. Actually, a big problem is that <laughs> show simple message box, if it fails, then it's gonna actually go ahead and I think, hold on one second. Yeah, it will actually override our git error, so we cannot use this uh, unless if we store that thing. But I think you got the point anyways. Uh, so that's, that's fine, I guess. Let's just remove this, okay. Uh, but I'm just telling you that you can actually show a simple message box if you want to. Anyways, in fact, we got to get rid of this uh, at the end of the video. But anyway, so this is pretty much how you initialize SDL. Of course, we have to quit SDL too when we're done. And there you go. Or we could say quit subsystem and we could tell it uh, the actual flags that we want to quit from SDL init video. And there you go. Pretty cool. Now, we have to create a window. How are we going to do that? Well, auto window is equal to SDL, create window. And here we have to give it a title. And then we have to give it a width and height. Now, this is not the same as SDL2, which you have to give it a position, you know. Um, but nowadays, it's not. Because in fact, in SDL2, most people didn't use that position arguments. Uh, they were just saying SDL in defined position or something like that. There was a flag for that. Uh, so they just removed it in SDL3 because it's just so useless. And even if you want to set the window position, you could just call another function on the window, essentially. But anyways, for the width, let's go with uh, width, width and height. And then the flags for now, let's go with zero. But we could actually go ahead and say... SDL, uh, sorry, window init flags or, oh, sorry, uh, create window flags or, yo, what, hold on, SDL, I don't even remember, that's, there you go, SDL window flags, there you go, resizable, and let's go. So if I include this flag, it will make the window resizable. Now I can or some other stuff. Let's say, for example, you're going to be using Vulkan API, for example, or OpenGL. Let's go with OpenGL, for example. Then you should or uh, OpenGL flag too. So we can actually prepare that stuff for you. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so that's basically it. Now for the width and height, of course, we have to create variables for that. Uh, or you could actually go ahead and just give it to it. But anyways, int height. Now, by the way, this is not physical size. This is not in pixels. So it depends on the monitor and the platform, etc. This is actually logical size, not physical size. Okay. Uh, so, for example, if you're going to be using OpenGL, which needs actual pixel dimensions, not uh, just logical size, uh, you know. So you have to actually go ahead and use another function to get that kind of size. But this is just a heads up for you anyways. Uh, okay, fine. Lovely. Now, this will return a pointer for us. And I'm going to check if that window... Is it a null PTR or not? If it is a null PTR, then we can actually go ahead and SDL log critical, you know, and stuff like that, just like this. And there you go. If not window, then do this. Lovely. Now, we can handle events. So while, and we need actually a, a variable for this. So is running, let's say. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to say true. At the start of the program, then while is running, we're gonna do some stuff. So while is running, we could say 
So yeah, we have to uh, to pull events of SDL. So let's say SDL event, event. But in fact, let me show you before doing that. Let me show you what's gonna happen right now. So we have just an infinite loop and notice that we got a window, but we cannot actually, it's not responsive at all. And in fact, you even not respond as you can see here because we're not handling SDL events. Now to handle SDL events, we have to use SDL pull event. And SDL pull event requires a pointer to an SDL event structure. There, oh, sorry, uh, like this. And then we have to give it a reference or pointer to that uh, variable to that local variable, and there you go. Now this should hopefully work out. And here, by the way, you're gonna have your rendering code or whatever you wanna do afterwards, after handling inputs. All right, and this is it. Now, as you can see, code attack. Oh, by the way, hold on a second. Let me remove one thing. Uh, so I forgot to actually uh, remove that thing that I shown you anyways. So this should be fine, all right? So as you can see right now, I can act, actually, it's responsive, but I cannot close the window. Notice. So how can I close the window? I have to just check for the event type uh, field and see if it's equal to SDL event type enum SDL event quit. Notice that it also have changed from uh, SDL2 from SDL quit to SDL event quit, okay? And those are pretty good changes. Okay, now let's actually say here, let's say uh, we could say is running is equal to false. And then after it finishes this body of the loop, it's just gonna go ahead and exit. Pretty cool. And we could also destroy the window. Uh, window. Now, of course, when you quit a subsystem, where you're gonna quit from SDL, it's gonna automatically do that for you. But it's just good practice to always do that explicitly. Uh, anyways, so that's, I believe, Oh yeah, so this is not pretty much good code, you know, uh, why? Too simply because we don't always have an event to pull, and not always, if there's no events to process, then, well, this, I, I believe this won't touch this is the event structure at all, so it will leave it in an initialized state, or at best, there's going to be a previous event from the last pulled event, which is not good. So what we have to actually do, we have to make sure that SDL have successfully pulled an ev a new event for us. Uh, so we have to, and this SDL pull event actually gives us an integer indicating zero or one. If it's one, that means it successfully did. So we're gonna say if SDL pull event, then let's check for that event, okay? Now this is reliable. Okay, let's see. Uh, there's nothing gonna be changing right now, but this is much, much more reliable, okay? and safe but the problem with this way of doing it is that we're only pulling one event every frame now you could have a lot of crazy code doing some crazy stuff and there could be like a frame that takes a long time or there is some lag or whatever and uh, let's say or your application is really struggling because of low hardware or something like that and what's going to happen is that your application will keep on you know like polling, not polling, but registering or queuing events from the windowing system. You will keep on doing that. And you're only handling one event per frame and it's gonna keep on accumulating. And at worst case, I think, or maybe even best case, I don't know exactly, but anyways, it, you will have like an overflow of events or something like, or you're just gonna hog the memory of the user and just make it worse. Uh, but the thing is basically, Instead of handling one event every frame, we have to handle all events, okay? All events that are currently not processed, all right? So basically SDL, now basically SDL goes ahead, it queues every event from the window in system, for example, Windows in this case. And essentially whenever we call SDL pull event, it will give us one, one event from that queue. And if there was an event, then it's gonna put it in this structure, this is the event structure, and it's gonna return true. Otherwise, if there's no event to process, then what it's gonna do, it's gonna 
give us false at that point and it won't do i think anything with the event or i guess it will set it to null ptr i'm not exactly sure what it's gonna do to be honest so yeah all right and that's pretty much pretty much it this is uh, the best code you can get all right amazing all right lovely 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 now uh, i want to abstract this code using a modern c class you know so let's go ahead and add a new class c class you can call it whatever you want i'm gonna call it window all right okay let's add now i don't want any of this junk i'm just gonna say uh let's see i'm gonna say Pragma, Pragma once, right? And then here our header will contain class window definition. And of course our CPP file will contain the, uh, you know, the implementation basically. All right, now of course we should make sure to go to our steamic list and add that uh, CPP file there, window.cpp. We don't need to include the header. Uh, Although it's a good practice, I think. Why? Too simply because some editors want, sh like for example, Visual Studio, uh, it can show the header file in the editors explorer, you know, uh, without having to go through files. But yeah, anyways. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And here the CPP is including the windows.h. So there you go. It's implicitly getting included too. Uh, but yeah, so here, uh, what we gotta do in window.h let's actually have our first variable and only variable in this case called mwindow now the type of this we will use pointers okay unique unique pointer in this case now there's unique and there's shared pointer as far as my knowledge goes okay uh, but if you don't know where which one to choose then just go with std unique pointer unless if you need that shared pointer uh, because shared pointer have some overhead and in fact uh, even for general case use case you know uh, you can in go ahead and actually convert an, an std unique pointer a unique pointer to a shared pointer if needed uh, but anyway for now and by the way unique pointer is basically you know like one object can take the ownership of some pointer and shared pointer multiple objects can take uh, ownership essentially and what i mean by ownership basically who is supposed to actually go ahead and allocate or actually deallocate uh, those that pointer for example now we're gonna see here we're gonna see a live example of this <laughs> okay first of all to use uh, po smart pointers we need to include memory Okay, and now let's actually say std unique ptr. And here you tell it the type of the pointer. Not this, okay, not this, no. Uh, without the star, without the pointer, just tell it the structure. Or, yeah. So here, of course, we need the sdl. There you go, lovely. Now, here, what we should do. Okay, so. This should be fine in if you if you uh, if you have a pointer that is allocated using the keyword new of C++. But the thing is, S SDL window is allocated by SDL, maybe using malloc or something like that. But basically, uh, who's responsible to actually free and allocate uh, the window is SDL in this case. So we have to give it a custom deleter in the template, the second template argument. Uh, in this case, so here we're just going to give it the type of that deleter, which is going to be a decal type, a reference to SDL when destroy window. Now this decal type will basically go ahead and take the signature of uh, and the type basically of our function pointer here of SDL destroy window. So we don't have to explicitly tell it the parameters of that function pointer, etc. This is a feature of, I think maybe C++ 11 or 14, or I'm not exactly sure, but anyways. Uh, so this is the M window. Let's go. And of course I have this little prefix here just to make sure member variable, basically member. Okay, nice. All right, so class variables, of course, uh, or class members are private by default. Struct members though are public by default. So uh, since I have a class here, 
uh, my private stuff are on top there and then afterwards I just say public and then here I can give it the public stuff. Now in my case I'm going to have a constructor that is public which is called the window and here we're going to have a const reference to well const std string uh, reference to title and of course he, in this case we need uh, we need to include string there you go, as you can see, I included the header string to include that, all right, nice. Next up, we need the integer width, and next up, we need the integer height, and then we can grab the flags too. So for flags, uh, we could say flags, flags. Okay, so SDL window, flags, you know, what I'm doing here, uh, flags, okay. All right, interesting. Now I could give these flags, for example, a default uh, default value. I'm gonna go with zero, but I cannot say zero because I said that it should be an SDL window flags. But in this case, there is no SDL window flags none. So what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna cast it into an enum, and this should work just fine. Zero casted to that enum. And I want also a default variable of height. You can do this or you cannot do this. It's just your choice. This is just a preference, okay? Oh, uh, 800. Most people seem to choose these dimensions. <laughs> so yeah, title, uh, let's say is, well, we cannot do this for the, this guy. But yeah, since we have one variable that is not optional, I really recommend adding explicit. Uh, it's just a pretty good practice, all right? Whenever you have one one kind of uh, argument that is non-optional, that doesn't have a default value. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now let's actually go ahead and generate the definition. And then we're gonna initialize our smart pointer. So this is how we're gonna do it using the initializer stuff. But of course it is important to initialize it here. It cannot do it here because in fact, if you do it here, you're gonna do something like this, uh, which is not gonna work because uh, you know, unique pointers doesn't have a copy assignment, I think. So you cannot really do it, do it as long as my knowledge goes. But anyways, M window, of course, my little limited knowledge about C, modern C++, but anyways, uh, in fact, C++ in general, <laughs> but anyway, especially modern C++, but yeah. Uh, all right, so let's actually initialize this guy. So the first thing we have to here actually is create SDL. Create, and by the way, let me actually take a new line here. Okay, nice. So let's actually go ahead and do this. SDL creates window, and we're gonna give it the title, but since this is an SCD string and SDL is a C APR, which requires a C pointer, we're gonna say title.cstr. And afterwards we need the width and then the height and then of course the flags, as simple as that. All right, interesting. Uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, but we also need to give it the deleter as we said in the definition of the templates, right? And the, the, the deleter in this case is a reference uh, function pointer to SDL destroy window. So here we're telling it the function to call to actually destroy that pointer, you know, to clean up that pointer, okay? All right, lovely. So we have actually done that. But the thing is, SDL create window could fail and it could give it a null pointer. So we have to actually check for that. Now we could say there is a lot of ways to handle errors. Now, for example, if you want to go as simple as possible, you could say SDL assert and assert that uh, M window is not equal to null PTR. Okay, you could say, or you could just say this actually, just say SDL assert that M window is not a null PTR, just like that. Or uh, you could use exceptions, throw SCD runtime exception, but to use that, you need to include, let's see, SCD uh, except. Now I'd like to use the new SCD expected, uh, but it's not it's not pretty supported by compilers currently. That's the first thing. And second thing, we cannot actually do that from a constructor. So we have to create another static 
thing that, uh, oh, anyways, a CD runtime error. And here we could just give it as DL get error. All right. So yeah, this is essentially give it some message, some string as a message uh, to why you have thrown that exception. And there you go. But of course, here we're going to throw that stuff if SDL is not found. So if not in window, I mean, if not in window, then do that stuff. And there you go. Now we could use the syntax without the, the curly braces only if there is one statement, you know, if there is multiple statements, you have to use curly braces. All right. Okay. Pretty much cool. 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 So what's the next step? Oh, actually, hold on a second. All right, interesting. Okay, pretty cool. Next up is we could make, yeah, I, th I think that's pretty much it, really. That's all we need, I believe. All right, let me see. And we don't have to worry, by the way, about move constructor, copy constructor, etc., because that's going to be handled for us because we're using uh, smart pointers, so yeah. Now here, let's see what we could do. Could remove this whole thing and just say window, window, just like this. And uh, of course we have to actually include that guy, alt enter, and there you go, I include the window.h right there and, and yeah. So here right now I could give it this, the title and there you go. And hopefully that's gonna work out. Now we, we don't need this anymore since it's gonna be automatically done for us when this window reaches the end of the scope, which is in this case, the scope of the main function. Um, so yeah, SDL quit subsystem. All right, let's run this guy. Although there is a big problem right here, I believe. Now, the thing is we should make sure in this case, if we want, to destroy that window, we should make sure it's in this scope. You know why? Because in fact, this will run before the scope closes, all right? <laughs> so you could end up with double free or something like that because SDL will clean up after you and you're also gonna try to clean up yourself. So you should make sure to scope this guy since we're using RAII uh, basically here. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty, pretty cool. Okay, now for SDL in its subsystem and stuff, we could create, for example, uh, I guess, by the way, don't need these variables anymore. Right? And by the way, if you want to explicitly set the width to something else, you could do that, height, etc. here are the flags, but yeah. And we could, of course, create multiple windows. Window two. The title, let's say, uh, I don't know, window two. And let's try this guy. And there you go, now we have two windows, lovely. So yeah, pretty cool. Now, as I said, make sure that the scope is right to think about the scope, because for example, if we, if the scope, let's say, ends here, look at this. Look what's going to happen. We're basically just going to create it and destroy it, right? Because right now we're using RAII, so just to make sure you're grasping that. So <laughs> you don't go crazy with that. Anyways, so pretty much that's, that's it. All right, lovely. So I don't need this second window. And in fact, we could abstract some other stuff into uh, static static functions. So we could say window.h, we could create a static function here in the, as a public member. Well, not public member, but public static function in the area. So static, let's say initialize or init. Okay, and init, just like that. And we'll actually go ahead and also have, I think, a static width or yes, something like that. 
and generate definition for function init and generate definition for function quit. Just like that, lovely. Now, oh, by the way, I forgot about the return type. So, um, not sure what's gonna give it for that one, but let's go with void for now. Now for init and quit, void, void. Not sure what I'm gonna return yet, but yeah. So for init, we're gonna go ahead and use this. For quitting, we're gonna use this guy. And there you go. Lovely. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now here we could throw an exception here too. Uh, but since this is a static thing, maybe I could use XCD expected here. I'm not exactly even sure if it's supported by my compiler. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> not exactly sure how we how it's how we can use it to be honest. But I guess that's right. <laughs> so you do SCD expected. So this is the new class. It's kind of similar to Rust results. Uh, so yeah. So the result, the success, well, will be nothing. And it could be an error. Now I think we could say just void there and then here, uh, a const char in this case, I believe. And then here, what we could do, if this happens, then we're essentially just going to return std and expected. And expected or inexpect, not exactly sure. Uh, seems to be right. Else, we're just gonna return nothing, right? But I think it's maybe just, it works exact, like. Uh, all right, let me fix this guy, by the way, first of all. So init, static void. There you go. And of course we need this to find here. Oh, sorry, uh, we need it like this. Now what? Okay, this is, seems to be fine now. Lovely. Now we could do the same with this guy too. STD expected, uh, but in fact, no. Quit subsystem, I don't think it gives us some error. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, it's void, so yeah, pretty fine, okay. Lovely, so that's pretty much it. Pretty, pretty much it. Now here, of course, we should make sure to run those guys, uh, window init, and here we could say window uh, quit. Okay, lovely. And so, yeah. Now here, this is gonna give us an, ex an unexpected, so auto result equal to that now if result if result so I'm not exactly sure but I think we could say it's not result then here we could do something about it essentially so STL law critical uh, STL category category let's say error and here we could get the value well actually not the value but the error in this case right I believe and there you go pretty much lovely pretty much uh, right amazing <laughs> and here of course since this window constructor could throw an exception uh, we have to say try and catch so try this guy and catch 
exception. A CD runtime, or we could just say exception, I guess. Let's just say a CD exception, exception. So we're gonna just catch any exception out there in the wild. <laughs> and here we're just gonna say, um, I think the same exact thing. But instead of result.error, we're gonna say exception.what. So here, there you go. Exception.what. I'm not entirely sure if all of this stuff works, <laughs> but yeah. All right. Try. But there is a big problem here. <laughs> is that when it's gonna quit this actual scope, it's just gonna be done. Man, <laughs> no. Oh, we shouldn't do this. I mean, let me show you, let me just show you because this could easily go so wrong if you don't know how ownership works and how scoping and RAI works and stuff like that. So, <laughs> in fact, we have to actually put this stuff here. Uh, or we could move the window, but anyway, let's not go that crazy for now. And there you go. Try and catch. Window quit. Not result, low critical. If not result, then that. And that's pretty much it. Pretty, pretty much it. And there you go, lovely. Now we could also abstract one other thing, which is this SDL pull event thing. Now, since this uh, could return an event, like, let me, let us just do it with code. It's better to do it with code to explain it. So, uh, void uh, window pull events. Now, this is going to be static because it's going to pull events for all windows. And this is how SDL and, in fact, any window in system works, at least as far as my knowledge goes. But anyways, um, pull events. So... Of course, we have to define it first here. So, static void, and let's actually put it here. I guess static void pull events. Or you know, what? I like to to keep the init and quit together, anyways. <laughs> and here, I don't, I want, I don't want to define it. But in fact, this is gonna return. Uh, SCD optional. I like to, to use SCD optional in this case to show you also that how it works. And for that, we need to include some uh, SCD optional. So the op optional header right there. And there you go. Uh, static STD optional. Now, of course, this requires uh, template arguments. So this template argument, in this case, for now, we're just going to return SDL event, although later on, we could also abstract SDL event into our own event kind of structure. But for now, let's keep it simple, same way as we did with SDL window flags. But anyways, pull events. Now, in this case, mm, so let's actually define that guy. Uh, so let me make sure to use the same guy here. Although, to be honest, I could maybe do this. No, no, uh, no, it won't work like that. <laughs> Anyways, never mind. So, window pull events. And here we're just going to create an SDL event structure event. And then we're going to say SDL pull event. Actually, we're just going to say if SDL pull event, and we're going to give it a reference to our event or a pointer to our event. And then if if there is if we pulled an event successfully, then what we're going to do, we're going to return, uh, I guess, event like this. Okay. Else, we're going to return uh, SCD null opt which means null optional, null. So yeah, when the optional doesn't contain any value, none essentially. This is like null PTR, okay? And there you go, that's pretty much it. And in fact, we could actually, we don't need this guy since there's one statement. And there you go, pretty cool, huh? Lovely. And now this is using modern CBB.
Okay. All right, so here, instead of doing this mess, what we could do, what we could do, let's see. I guess we could say event is equal to, also add a parentheses here. And instead of SDL pull event, we can say window static function pull event, actually event, not events. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. In fact, we could do such a thing, but there's no need, I guess, for now at least. So, uh, yeah, okay. Call event equal to window. No viable overloaded equal. Uh, I guess here we could say, what? Hold on, what? Oh, oh, sorry. Here we gotta say a CD optional. It's the element. And there you go. Of course, here we have to change this to a pointer because right now we're using pointer. Otherwise, if you don't, you want uh, the overhead of pointers, like if you're gonna be accessing a lot of uh, stuff right there, you could actually just extract that value. So we could say it's the event, event is equal to, I believe event dot value, but let's just call it EV for now, event dot value. There you go. Now I could just say ev.type directly. I believe. Use of declared identifier. Oh. Oh, right now, because in fact, there is multiple statements now. And there you go. Now this should work just fine. But uh, in my case, I don't think there's any need for this, to be honest. Uh, just do this and I'm just going to turn this into a switch statement instead and so I'm going to switch on event type all right and we're going to check if if the case of this guy if that's the case then we're going to say is run equal to false and we're going to break out of the switch statement and there you go now I can remove this guy. There you go. Nice. Not sure if I can remove this or not. I think so. Uh, but yeah, here we can render stuff up. And there you go. There you go, window quit. Code taco. Now I've seen an error right there. I'm not sure where I can find it again. Messages. Oh yeah, there you go. Window init not all control path return a value. Okay, so it's warning us about this guy right here in init. So let's just return explicitly, although it's not needed. But let's just return explicitly. Else return, I believe. That if does that make sense? Non void function in it should return. I guess I should say std expected, maybe. Not exactly sure, but yeah, anyways, never mind. So this should be fine. We don't need to be explicit about it, I think. Um, can remove this. Oh, what we, anyway, never mind. So this is fine. All right, so that was it, I believe, for this video. I mean, if there is nothing else to to look into, as you can see, event is equal to window all event, and that's pretty much it for now. Let me know if there's any suggestions in the in the description. I'm also a beginner, so that was it for this video, and see you later. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching.